I'm Sheila Mason. I am a self-taught artist. And today what I'm hoping to accomplish with you is showing you how to do a 3D painting using plaster. This method came to me uh, through a story where someone shared with me where they seen a 3D painting done with plaster. And I said, oh, I can do that. Well, I never seen the paintings this person did or I have no idea of their method. So I came up with my own and that's what I want to share with you today. I have a wonderful appreciation for what trees give us and I also have a deep down fear that old growth is going to disappear and if you've never walked in an old growth forest I want to inspire that. I want people to walk down these paths and experience what I experience, the calmness, what it gives you, the wonderful healing feelings and it's a beautiful sensation and that's I just am trying to honor old growth and all trees. I really think they add something to our life. Look at the bark. Look at the difference of that pine tree and the fir tree and an oak tree. You know, it's... Once you start looking, you can't help yourself but constantly learning. So what we need, as far as materials on hand, is you need a canvas. This is one of my, I have for my grandchildren, so I can show you. And you're going to need a little cup, and this is to mix up the plaster in. I use these little tongue depressor sticks for my mixing, and you can use whatever you feel. Uh, the other part is I use glue all. I don't use the school. You want to make sure it's glue all if you use what I use. And then, then of course, plaster. Now, plaster you get from a hardware store. Actually, all of this you can pick up. These are just leftover yogurt containers or something, and, and I just always keep a little pile of them. So let's get started. Let's start with the plaster. So we're going to do one tree, and I'm going to reach in here and fill it halfway. And as you do it, the more you do it, the more you'll start understanding what kind of consistency you want. I do try to do half and half. That's the glue. And you can see it's almost like a dessert, you know, it's like half and half. And so then I just slowly, and it's messy, so you might want to have an apron on, you know, or something like that. But you should have uh, your studio or wherever you're doing this should be warm because plaster likes warm and it sets up better when it's warm. I have never done it in the cold, but everything I've learned about plaster is it needs to be you know warm I guess it's like painting in your house you you gotta do it you know at a warmer temperature now when you're mixing you gotta really make sure because it really hides down on the bottom and just keep turning it until you get it really nicely mixed and the thing about did did we make enough? It's going to be, as you do it, you can start judging how much you need. For what I'm going to show you today, I've made enough. But you can use bigger containers, make a bigger amount. Um, I like 
having the control over the plaster so I try to work in slower amounts. We're going to take this over to this other area where I can show you how to actually put it onto the canvas. Alright, so now let's move on to putting some plaster onto a canvas. Uh, like I said, this is a canvas I normally don't use, but it's, it'll be good for demonstrating. So the first thing I do is I draw in the tree that I want to do, and we're just going to make up a tree here. And I use that as my guideline. Now plaster has a tendency to flatten out. So we're going to put it on and we're going to just kind of make it go up and down. And it will set up within, oh, start setting up, I would say 10 minutes, it'll get stiffer and stiffer, but it's still going to be flattening at that time. Okay, so now we got we have quite a bit left too, which is good. So we went to the edges. One of the things you're going to have to really pay attention to is the bottom of your, how does this fit into your cam, your painting and not look like it's just kind of stuck on there. And So you got to feather the bottom and think about it going into your painting. So, and I'm going to show you some examples of that. So you can see we still have quite a bit of plaster here. And now I'm going to show you the difference here. Now here we is the blank tree. Here's some plaster. Now you see how smooth that is? That's because it just is flattening, which is the one here that we just did. And now as it started, before it set up too heavily, we took these are tools that I use and we just start making lines and that's why these are here. Now this one we went ahead and we came back and we made lines and again working on the bottom trying to make sure and working on the, the sides of it. Now as you can see this is flattened out quite a bit but it's got a before we can add more and do lines, it's got to set up. Now here's one we did ahead of time, and it's dry, and we worked it, it's set up. Now one of the things I want to share with you is when you do this, it's going to have a tendency, whoop, here we go, I'm going to show you. You're going to make these lines going down, coming up, going down, coming up and you need to know what kind of tree you're doing before you start you need to go out and look at the tree you're doing for me I like to do redwoods and I live very close to the redwoods so I'm very fortunate but when you do do your tree you need to know ahead of time what kind of tree because it depends on how you're going to do the bark you don't want to do a you know a smooth bark and then call it a oak tree say. <laughs> so anyways we're going down and you can see that some of the lines are staying in and some aren't and this is going to happen quite a few times as we do it. One of the other things like I said that bottom is so crucial and I'm going to show you why in a little bit. Um, one of the other things that's really interesting is on this tree here, I did this on purpose on this, is I look at it and go, oh, it's way too narrow up here, and I don't like that. So normally, I'd want this tree to come maybe like this, because it's a big old redwood, right? Now, we could do this two ways. We could paint this and make this blend in through a painting, which I have done on some of them. Or we can add more plaster. You know, go down the sides on this, this one here and add to it after it's been dried. 
And remember, like in a painting and everything else, you know, the sides, the lines are tighter together. And you're going to see what a difference this makes by, you know. And so when you're looking at your tree, you can always add more plaster, but you cannot take the plaster off. Once it's on there, that's what you got. So I have... Um, because everything was trial and error for me with this, I had to really learn about putting the plaster on and taking it off. Now, one of the other things that you uh, are when when I was doing this was I was going, wow, well, I don't want this to pop off on somebody if I, you know, have a painting. So I put some on and then I tried to take the plaster off. I did it with a chisel and a hammer and all I got was a hole in my canvas. So setting up the actual painting of uh, when we're doing 3D is getting the plaster on, giving it time to dry some so it sets up and it starts becoming firmer and firmer so you can work with it because as it starts drying those lines are going to start staying and it'll be so much fun to start seeing this tree come alive so we're setting up, we're letting it dry letting the plaster harden a little bit you can see this plaster now is pretty hard. It's yeah, it's it's starting to get pretty firm. So these tools here I uh, use mostly. I usually use this, which I use in painting. You know, when, but it works really well with the plaster and cleans up really well. This is also from my clay, and but it, it really adds. Once it's a little, you know, little more set up, because it, and it's harder to clean, but it works well when I'm looking for a lot of lines in the bark. Uh, this brush, I use it mostly to clean out the other tools when they get plaster. But I use this plain old tongue depressor sticks you know the most and they work really fine and and they're cheap now you could use anything you might have a favorite little old knife that you just love you might find a stick in the forest that you go oh this this works the best you know but whatever you you I want you to experiment and feel comfortable and don't worry about mistakes because there is none. It's all about just learning and finding what it is and reaching that goal of what you like. So, and let's see, was there any other? And these are just also from my uh, clay box. And sometimes I'll want a, uh, a knot hole and, I'll, and when it dries I can kind of scoop in there and scoop out a little knot hole. So, and most of these things you can get from an art store. These, um, not very expensive. Uh, these, the reason I have these here is because they're rejects in my clay. And I, t I never throw anything out of my tools. I use them in different things. When they come rejects here, they'll go into my cement projects and so it's like they just move into a different area and I really love that and I'm familiar with them and know how they work. See how they're starting to flatten out even some more. We'll just keep working it until it's finally dry. So one of the things when I paint it's like I want this whole forest scene and I go for a lot of walks in the woods, and fortunately I live in the woods, which is very helpful. 
but I have to make sure when I'm painting that these here, which are the <laughs> I can't read <remember>. ferns. <laughs> The ferns here are the same size going all the way across. You don't want a fern like this back here. So you got to keep your perspective of size. And so when I'm painting, sometimes I'll block it in like I have it in right now. And then I have to go back and go and actually measure sometimes like, okay, that fern's that size, that one. Oh, that one's too little, or too big, or that one's... In. Then I bring it down and I go, this one's this size. Are they the same size? And so I play with the different perspectives, and if it's a, and it's very important to do that to make sure you get percep perception of what you're looking for, and the trees in the back. And there's always the thing about the further away something is, the lighter it is, and that's usually true. Sometimes it's hard to do woods and forests because they're dark. And it's hard to bring the light. This will have a lot of light coming through it when I get done. And it will be very focused light. And highlights will come out. And I kind of have them where I think I'm going to put them. But I, I do that at the very, very end when I am captured it. And this will become brilliant. You know, where the light's touching different parts. And I bring it in and blend it into the forest behind and hopefully, and the water's got a long ways to go, and painting it, just paint it. Uh, I, I do dark, then I do my browns and my reds, and then I go across this way sometimes if I need highlighting and then bring them up. Play with it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, you might want to start on some real cheap canvases like that little one I had until you, you know, get a feel. Uh, I threw away a bunch when I first started because I just couldn't get it what I wanted. What I want to point out on these is, again, we talked about blending the bottom and making it work into the painting where it becomes part of the painting. And this is really important. As you can see, I have a little bit over here that I'm having a problem with. And that's because this was too thick and I didn't feather it so... Over here, I'm going to have to go back, plaster, and get this feathered and change it. And now, this tree, I like the rest of the trees. I feel okay about them. But this tree is too fat, flat. I didn't get in here in time and make enough lines that I liked. And also, you can see the edge of this is all paint because it wasn't right. So I'm going to have to go back and redo this tree completely. It might mean throwing the whole painting out, and, but I think I can save this. But again, pay attention to that blending in the bottom. The, the better job you do in the beginning, the lot easier it is. These, these are fine. I felt fine with that. But this tree here and this tree here are giving me a little bit of a hard time. Uh, this painting's got a long ways to go, but again, here... The lines are much smaller, and then they get big in the front. And it's the same with all the trees, you know, that again, you've got your outer smaller lines and then your bigger lines, but that blending on the bottom, and none of the ground is finished in here, so I can't really share too much with you on that. But keep that blending going, and don't be afraid, like this is all painted in, and it can blend in with other things, which is fine with me, except for this is just too flat here. It just is not working. So we're going to fix that by putting more plaster on it. I add people for reference of size, because the redwoods, it really is about that size. And they're just so beautiful. And old growth is what I want to share and want people to, to see. Alright, so here's the one that we put together from the beginning. And as you can see, it's really starting to set up. When I make a line, I mean, I really have to put a little more pressure on it this time. But I want those 
the edges especially to have a lot of lines on the edge. It really makes a difference. That is uh, to give you the illusion of the tree being round. You want to make sure, you know, when you're, it's like a painting, you know, the closer you are, the bigger the lines, and the further away the tree is, the smaller the lines. So we're doing the same thing. And again, is this going to blend? I'm going to peel this back some because again there's that problem with making sure and like I said don't be afraid to try things make you know if you did this and went oh I blew it yeah you might have but you know what it's okay you're learning something you're learning why did you blow it how did it what was it that you were trying to accomplish and and all those things matter and for me I'm a hands-on learner and I really learn a lot through mistakes hopefully not too much reinventing the wheel okay that's gives a little gristle you see how the plaster changes when you pull it different once it starts drying it becomes a different kind of look so you've got to make sure you're now this is where this one comes in. This is adding fine lines which will show up when you paint. You can't really see them very well but they, they're helpful. Alright this one over here is looking pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Again, now this one's going to be a problem because down here this is not feathered. This is going to be very difficult. See, normally that should have been feathered out, completely feathered. Even if it's, you don't need to have dips in them. You know, that's not necessary. This one here is workable, but this got feathered. This didn't, which is okay, but it should be feathered further down. And, of course, this is just to show you the difference between it being smooth and a little bit of work and where it stands and what you start out with. And so think about how the tree is sitting how you can make it blend into the painting but more than anything don't be afraid of doing the plaster just go for it practice think of the look you're looking for what kind of tree is this you know is this a fir tree or is this a redwood tree and what does the bark of a redwood tree actually really look like and you'll find you can always go back on your painting and change colors of things so you, you're never stuck. Like I said I have thrown out a couple paintings gotten so far and just could not get that bark to do what I wanted it to and I had to give up and start a new painting. So again don't be afraid Play with your ideas. See, it's crumbling now, and so I have to stop. But I like a little bit of that because if I'm really doing an old growth tree, because the bark has that look when you're out in the woods where it's dark and black, and maybe it's been burnt by a fire or something, and you can add to it. So, having the most helpful thing I could say is know what your tree is in your mind know what you want and it will help you get there if you didn't like this you, you have two choices right now this is too too gone you can't use this anymore well you could but it would be hard like if we tried to put this on we could we could build up the center and make it a little thicker but it's going to be harder to control 
but it's we could do that. I actually think it takes a whole day to really get it dried completely. And I try to let that, I'll do it and then I'll work on another project or another canvas and get it prepped, you know, and get, get my primer on it and all of that before I start. Now, like I told you, I have tried myself to take the plaster off and I have not been able to which I'm very happy about I would just be hor horrified if a tree popped off a painting <laughs> I would just and that was one of my fears like I said because I'm self-taught Sometimes you are doing a lot of reinventing of the wheel, and I really try to avoid that. I do a lot of reading. I talk to a lot of people. And I really want you to explore and enjoy. And I shared with you the things to look out for, and I hope that works for you. It's very important that you bring your tree to the top. And the other part is to clean it. Because in the end, you want it to look, you know, clean and sellable. So you got to keep that clean. And a lot of times a tree will be all the way to the sides. You got to make sure you clean it, keep it clean. This is really starting to set now, which is nice because you can do some more, more detail work. All well, that extra little plaster really helped, I think. Doesn't that look nice? That, that'll be a nice, nice tree. Now, some trees, you're not going to have this little dip. It's going to be more, and if you do, remember, just bring that bottom down and as much as you can. Even if it does that, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Cause like, like, you know, as a painter, you know you can deal with that. There we go. I think we got a pretty good tree there and it is messy my shoes usually get pretty messy then I have to go wipe them off now this one is one that I'm not sure if I'm finished or not that's why it's still here and that is this one here I had the same thing but I do have some rocks in it and again, it's that feathering and getting it to blend into the painting. Not easy. And then the other thing is, when you get close to being done, the plaster has a tendency to dry, and all these little white specks of plaster start showing up. So you will be repainting a lot. And I have to turn it every which way to get it from every size. So, just remember, blend that bottom as much as you can and work it into your painting. All right, I hope you enjoy, I hope you practice, and have a wonderful time doing it. See that tree? <laughs> That's the <all> tree. <laughs>